Good day, I'm Jeff Rouse, executive producer of Our Story Productions. We have long promoted the small towns of the Midwest on our television show and website, Destination Small Town, now covering over 1,500 towns throughout the, our nine state coverage area. In the last year, we have also produced a local show, Martin County on TV, that not only highlights the businesses and points of interest of our community today, but shares stories and interviews done by Hometown Focus and Focus on Fairmont over the last 25 years. I am pleased to announce we are beginning to shoot new episodes of Martin County on TV for the second season, and we would like to thank our sponsors who made this show possible. Hi everyone, I'm Denise Rouse, owner of the Giddy Up Boutique in beautiful downtown Fairmont, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Tina Jetty. Hi Tina. Hi. How are you? I am good. Great. Hey, could you tell us about your business? Sure. I am a realtor with Century 21 Northland Realty here in Fairmont. And the first time I met you, you were pregnant with your third child. Uh-huh. And that goes back a few years. It does. And I think you had been in Fairmont for just a short amount of time. Could yeah. you tell me what brought you and Steve to Fairmont? Um, my husband Steve was transferred with Torgerson Properties, which also owns, they, they own the Holiday Inn, Perkins, um, basically hotel and restaurant management type work. And they transferred him here from uh, Austin, where both of us grew up in 1996 and so I had never been to Fairmont before was brand new to Fairmont didn't know anyone here when we moved here so I started out doing daycare in my house decided I needed adult conversation and, and that's so when you got your that's when realtor's I got into real estate okay yeah yep. and how old so. were your children when you got your real estate license well our first one was born in 90 actually I have a son who was five when we moved to town and so he was born in 91, so he is now 28. And then I have the three girls, and the th uh, that was the youngest of the three girls that I was pregnant with. So they were three, two, and then I was pregnant with the third, with Jenna, and she was born in 2001. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, after following your family through the years, I have never seen such a hardworking, more talented family. All of your girls have a unique different talent which is really fun don't you think as a mother yeah. to see them grow and blossom yeah into you know like Jenna being the artist mm -hmm. and she did the wings on our building yeah and then we got to bond over Doctor Who she's a Doctor Who fan yes, she is. too which yep. that was really fun yeah and then your other daughter loves to bake yeah and now she's doing those awesome cupcakes and yep. cakes and she's has she been doing that for a long time or is this just something she just decided one day she wanted to do well she's 20 now she started when she was 15 wow so and then when she turned 16 she got a job at Hy-Vee for a short time as a cake decorator but she had so many orders on her own that she and just I also does see that on the side. you're going to be a new grandma. I am going to be a grandma. <laughs> That's exciting, First time isn't it? grandma. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in January. Awesome. Come in January. Awesome, yeah. awesome. A little boy, we already know. And so. besides doing the real estate and being mom, you also help your husband out at Beantown. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So my husband and I bought uh, Beantown Grill in 2000. We bought the building in 2011. We opened in February of 2012. And so we've been open, oh, it'll be eight years coming up here in February. And flashback to when the girls were little and you decided you needed a change and you got your realtor's license. Yep. Um, and then you sold realty for how long before you decided to do some banking? Um, I was at Century 21 for about 10 and a half years selling real estate. I went through the really, really good times in 2005, 2006, 2007, and then the crash happened in 2008. Um, then there was a second crash in 2010. Things weren't real great. We had a young family. We needed a guaranteed paycheck. Um, a position opened up at Propinium Bank as a mortgage lender. So I thought, well, what the heck? What have I got to try. lose? I'll go apply and see if I get the job. And I did. And so that gave me the mortgage lending experience on the other side. Um, so it, it actually fits really well in with real estate. It's mm -hmm. really good to know the mortgage side of it because it's just, um, it keeps things 
flowing a little bit. Because even being smoother. in real estate, you had to know a little bit of yeah. the banking yep. to sell a home also, right? Yep. So but it there was, was kind of a... Lot, a whole lot more behind the scenes that I learned, that you learned by working at the bank. However, it wasn't my true love. It wasn't my true passion. I still like selling real estate. I like being out and selling So real were estate. you at the bank when you and Steve decided to purchase Beantown? Yes. And did this help you with the purchase to have the real estate background and the mortgage lending background yes. to purchase and redo the building? Yep. There's a whole lot of um, different things that I learned by going through that whole purchase and building a business. Um, you have to, we had to work with the SBA, the Small Business Administration. We had to work with the Fairmont Economic Development Authority. We had to learn about um, draws and construction loans and appraisals that cost $2,000. And it's just a whole different, it's a whole different world in commercial. And by going through that, I learned a lot about how that process works. <laughs> and is there a lot of houses for sale in Fairmont right now? Not like there used to be. Not like the inventory is really low. So And are most of them high end, low end, middle? I would say the majority are high end. We are lacking the starter homes, you know, mm -hmm. where people start. We just don't have a lot of of those homes available right now. And when they do come up they sell fast. Wow. Yeah. Ways. Yeah. And then, you know, with working at the bank too, I sat through several meetings that were um, egg, egg related and business bankers and so do you just, sell a lot of farmland then since we are such a rural no, community no not, there's not, not much that comes up for sale it, then it huh? pretty much stays within the family oh, if something okay. comes up it stays in the family um, or they'll hold on to it rent it out and then when the kids inherit it they'll just keep renting it out mm -hmm. so it's very it's not real often that farmland comes up, and when it does, yeah, I mean, we can deal with that too. Tina, before we continue, let's take a look back at a segment we call Martin County on TV Flashback. It's always fun to get a glimpse inside a new building or someone else's home. Well, Marnie Broad, our history reporter, is going to take us inside another interesting residence. Hello, this is Marnie Broad, and I'm here with your, with your history brief today. We're going today to Woodland Avenue to the Henry Rippey home. It's 96 years old, but for the last 35 years, the owners, the current owners, um, Connie and David Bossert have been living there. We've talked to friends, we've talked to relatives, and a couple of grandchildren of Henry Rippey, and uh, we've found out some very interesting things. In 1899, at about the cost of $36,000, Henry Rippey built this 14-room, three-story mansion on the most prestigious street in Fairmont. Henry was a wealthy grain merchant. He, his wife Kate, and their four children lived here until 1935. And at that time, in the midst of the Depression, the house was sold to a real estate entrepreneur for a mere $4,000. And then a really remarkable, unusual renovation occurred. The roof was raised, the second story dismantled, and the top story was lowered onto the first floor. The dismantled second story was rebuilt into a new house on Cedar Street. You know, and also the carriage house was made into a house, remodeled. This operation resulted in three homes, since the original had two apartments upstairs, five living quarters were created in all. Well, let's now go join Connie for a tour. This recessed alcove at the front door was used as a place to sit, remove overshoes, and fur capes. That was a pioneer must. Those carriages were cold. What is now the master bedroom was once the music room where tea was served, Whist was played, the piano practiced, and intimate musicals were presented. The grand piano that almost filled this room is now standing in St. Martin's Episcopal Church. The living room contains stained glass windows and an extra long window seat. In the Rippey's day, when the houses were few and far between, the women would sit here, could look all the way down Alvin, Albion Avenue, and they could watch Mr. Rippey and his horse and carriage turn onto Woodland, over the wooden sidewalks and up to the portico share. 
A coal-burning fireplace with hand-carved woodwork and a built-in bookcase also set off this elegant room. The ornate oak parquet floors lead us into the dining room, which is large enough to have seated 24 at a single table. Even the floor buzzer, which Mrs. Rippy used to summon her kitchen help, is still functional. Can you visualize a sumptuous meal on this elegant sideboard? The beveled glass doors above and the many drawers below have copper drawer pulls. This large kitchen has been updated with careful thought to preserving the heritage of this beautiful home. We thank Connie and Dave Bossert for allowing us this trip into the past. Many memories. This is Marnie Brote for Focus on Fairmont. Martin County on TV flashback. While we're back, Tina, could you tell us some of the reasons people are moving to Fairmont? And what you tell them as reasons that they should move to Fairmont? So actually coming from Austin, in a town that doesn't have any lakes, I sometimes wonder if people take it for granted that we have all these beautiful lakes here. And I think you're right. And the fact that five lakes, look at the lakeshore property people are right. able to buy, right? Right. And probably because of the five lakes, the lakeshore property is probably a good value, don't you think? Right. And then the other um, factor that I look at is in Austin, where I grew up, they have Hormel, and Hormel is kind of the, um, half the town is employed there. Mm -hmm. Where here we have a lot of um, diversity, we have a lot of um, smaller industries, which helps keep the town stable, I think. Um, I lived through the Hormel strike of 1987, mm -hmm. which was horrible. Mm -hmm. And we just don't see that kind of thing here because we don't have one major industry that's controlling the entire town. Exactly. So we just, we really like Fairmont and because I really like Fairmont, it's easy for me to sell it on somebody moving into town. Mm -hmm. I think if you like where you live, it, it just makes it easy. Yeah, it's a natural. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah. About three years ago, I attended a leadership group through the Chamber of Commerce and there was a group of about 20 of us that for nine months, every month, we we went on a different theme. And we had our health care day and our economic development day and our um, ag day. We went out and toured some windmill farms. We, we toured Mayo Health Systems. We learned about all of the different services that are offered here in town. I just got a really, really good understanding of what all Fairmont has to offer. Mm -hmm. I knew I loved the town, but then after going through that program, I learned why I loved Fairmont. Yeah, and to see all the different personalities it takes mm -hmm. to make up a town and right. to make a town work. Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. So Tina, now to the most important part of the interview, how do we get a hold of you if somebody wants to buy or sell a home? Well, probably the easiest way is just go to my Facebook page. I have Tina Jetty Century 21 North and Realty Facebook page, and I always keep my uh, customers up to date on there with upcoming events. I've been doing some home buyers and home sellers seminars and I'll be having some of those in the future. And then um, they can always call me too at 848-5641. I would say as far as a website to go to, I probably the best one is realtor.com. That one is linked to the MLS and so it is updated every 15 minutes and it's always up to date. Um, there's a lot of other ones out there like Zillow, but they're just, they're not updated. So I'll get calls from people wanting to know about a house that sold a year ago that hmm. they saw on Zillow and it's no longer on there. So realtor.com is probably the, the best one to go to when you're looking the for the most house. accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. up to date. Well, so. I want to thank you so much for joining me yes, today thank and you. getting to chat about real estate and yeah, and getting to know you much better. So, all right. Well, thank you, yeah. Denise.